My name is Marnie McLean, and I'm going to discuss using Microsoft Word to draw schematics for um, knitting and crocheting patterns. I've also done a tutorial on drawing schematics in Illustrator, and if you're comfortable and have access to Illustrator, I would recommend that for slightly more professional results, but you can absolutely get some pretty decent results in Microsoft Word if that's what you have available. I'm on a Mac. Um, I'm running OS 10.5 and this is Microsoft Office 2008. If you're running a different OS or a different version of the software, you can refer to your user's guide or, or help menu or the almighty Google for um, information on, on how you might do these same steps in the version you're running. To start with, I've opened a blank document and I've set half inch margins all around because I find Microsoft Word makes huge margins and I don't need those. I'm going to go to my view menu and I want to pull up my formatting toolbar. We'll be using that quite a bit and then I'll also be pulling up my drawing toolbar. I'm pretty sure that in in uh, PC world you're going to look in a different menu for that but uh, again refer to your user's guide. It's the formatting toolbar and the formatting palette and the drawing palette. So once you have those open, I would suggest that on just a scrap piece of paper, you go ahead and draw a rough approximation of what you're aiming for, and then go through your pattern and write all of the details for the exact size that you're going to be drawing a schematic for. I usually do my schematic in the sample size. Each size will be proportioned slightly differently if it's properly graded. So there's no way for it to look perfect for every size, but if it matches the sample, you should be in good shape. And what you're going to want to do is put not only all the widths, but all the depths between any shaping points. So if you have waist shaping, you don't want just the width of the hips and the width of the waist. You also want to know how far between the hips and the waist you're going. And that's all going to become more important, you'll see, as we're working. So you have your sketch, you have your palettes up. Um, now we're going to begin to draw our schematic. First, I turn on grids, and I want to set this slightly smaller. These are going to basically mark our inch increments. We are going to turn on the grid lines on the screen. And if you need more increments, you would make this number smaller. Voila. And then in our formatting palette, I want to select this free form drawing tool. I'm going to draw half of the shape now. I'm going to do that just so I know that it's completely symmetrical and it's going to save me a few, a few steps. I'm also going to round all my measurements to the closest inch because unlike in Illustrator, where I can do nice big documents with lots of different complex grid lines. This is going to be a little simpler, and we're just going to snap to one inch increment. I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, and um, maybe we'll make that 175. And that's going to allow you to see a little bit more of what I'm doing here. Have my free form tool selected. And I'm going to begin drawing at the hem. My hem is 40 inches around, so that's 20 inches wide, and half of that would be 10. So I'll start here, and I'll go over 10 grid lines. I just click when I get to the point um, that I want to make my next grid line. And just as a, a warning, this freeform tool is, is pretty decent, but it sometimes throws in a random curvy line that you don't intend. And when that happens, it's often easier just to, <laughs> to start fresh, though you can modify those points after the fact. So we'll, we'll look at that if it comes up. The next step is to go up six increments and then go in two. And that's going to be our waist shaping. Our waist is about an inch, and then I have nine inches up to the bust, and I'm only going to come out one increment, so I'll draw that now. Click, 
and then um, my arm's eye comes in about three inches total so what I'll do is go underarm bind off for one and then another two for the shaping and the total and see there that got a little curvy that's actually okay for an arm's eye so I won't I won't worry about it but if you wanted that to be straight you could start over or edit it later um, and I'll fix that little wonky bit too the total arm's eye is seven inches deep so from from that bind off I want to go up seven that's one two three four Seven. I have a three inch wide shoulder that goes up an inch and then I have a four inch deep neck that curves a little bit and then when I get to the end I double click and you can see it draws my lines the default in the newer versions is, you know, blue and shadowed and all sorts of cool looking things that actually aren't all that terribly useful.